Okay, so this is the Surface Pro, uh, Surface Pro 2, basically the same thing. I just wanted to show you a couple of things. Let me see if I can get in there closer. Yeah. Okay, so this is on the Microsoft uh, site, and this is the Surface Pro. We're going to be concerned with the volume up and the volume down button, the pin, and this right here is the Windows button that I'm talking about. That's the one that's on the screen. It's a little capacitive touch Windows button. It actually vibrates when you touch it. And it usually um, switches back and forth between the Metro screen and the uh, standard uh, Windows screen. Uh, but we're going to reprogram this Windows button and the volume button on this side. The two volume buttons here. We're going to reprogram them and then we're also going to reprogram the pin. Uh, we're going to use another pin. This, this is a stock pin. It only has one button right there. Uh, this, the pin we're using for Fujitsu has two buttons. So let's get started. We're going to use auto hotkeys and that way we can reprogram the volume up and the volume down button and also the windows button that is on the screen. Um, how in actuality you would do that is uh, you will go to my website and I will actually have the text there uh, but I'm just going to go ahead right click and edit the script and that's all we're going to put in there so all you do is just go to your desktop right click the desktop and you want to put new auto hotkey script and then you're going to name it uh, I'm just going to leave it like this because I'm not actually going to use it uh, so we're going to go with that and then we're going to right click that script we just created edit script and you can go ahead and just leave everything here and just copy all of this text here that I'm going to have on my website that is story2pixel.com copy that and it's gonna bring it down a couple of clicks and then paste and then all you have to do is save it and then in this case I'm gonna close it because what I can do is I have this one already open here and uh, we're not going to actually use it in this form this is what we're gonna do I'm gonna go ahead and close this this is located here it's going to be in your documents folder I'm going to right click it and I'm going to hit compile script that's going to create an executable uh, if you look here if I right click this in properties it becomes an exe file now the reason I'm doing that is see this is the original that I created the executable from and you'll see that it is an AHK which is auto hotkeys so now I have this executable and I can actually move it into my application folder for Cinema 4D. And when I do this, it's going to ask for administrative privileges. Uh, just go ahead and say OK. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and rename this experiment so that you can actually test. So you can see what happens when I drag it over. You'll need to provide administrator permission to move this to the folder. Hit continue. Boom, right there. So I don't need this. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete it. Okay. So now I have an executable. This is in the Maxon programs, Maxon Cinema 4D folder, whichever version you have. I have an executable there. Now, the thing is, is I want when I open from my desktop when I have a shortcut I want it to open Cinema 4D and this executable because if I just open Cinema 4D it's not going to automatically set up the shortcuts for the volume up button the volume down button and the uh, Windows button I want it to do everything at once so this is what I do is I set up what's called a BAT file so if I go hit um, just go to my desktop right click new I just want a text file so text document don't hit rich text document you want just plain old text document now this is what we're going to do we're going to open it and then we're going to save it actually we're going to save as I'm sorry and we're going to save this as the type all files because we're going to save this as a C 
for D. And I'm just going to call this V2. V2 dot BAT. That's a batch file. And this is what it's going to do. I'm going to go ahead and uh, save this to my desktop. Make sure it says all files. Save. And if I go to my desktop, go ahead and close it. You'll see right here, C4D V2. Right now it's empty. I'm going to show you my actual batch file itself. This is it. And all it is is, uh, and I'll have this on the website so that you can copy and paste uh, into yours, uh, at echo off. Now this is my understanding what this does is when you hit the batch file, it actually pop pops up a terminal uh, window. And this uh, closes the terminal window so you don't see it, so you don't have a bunch of windows popping up because it's going to do it twice. Uh, what you're telling it to do is to start in the program file, Cinema 4D 64-bit, which is the one that I have. And then also, again, echo off, start program files, MaxSign Cinema 4D. And it's, uh, everything is going to the MaxSign Cinema 4D R14 folder, the C4D execute, uh, that little uh, auto hotkey execute that we put in there. So I, I make sure you save it, close it. Now this is the cool thing about it, is now when you do it, I just have this separated from everything else. I have one for Photoshop and one for Cinema 4D. Is I double click it, it automatically opens Cinema 4D, and it automatically op opens the execute file. So that now when I pop up a cube, I can take my pen and I can hold the volume up down, the volume up button, and I can move it side to side and it actually rotates as if I was holding down the Alt key. So that's the Alt key. This is the volume up button. If I hold the volume down button, it actually moves it side to side because I told it to use the shortcut Shift 1, which moves it side to side. And then also, if I use the eraser, which I've covered before, the eraser is now the right click. If I hold that and use either the volume up or the volume down button, it now zooms. And this is all with the pen. And then if I hit O, it pops back in the center. I'm switching over to uh, the Mac. Uh, that way I have more room to play. Uh, on the Surface Pro, if you're trying to do this while doing a screencast, everything is very tiny and very tough to do. Uh, while you're working on your Surface Pro setting up Cinema 4D, I recommend you use the mouse. Uh, I have something first I have to show you, uh, and, and you'll see why in a um, few minutes. Uh, let's do this. Uh, let's go to Window. New view panel. Now you see this series of dots right here? Same thing as this. Anytime you see a series of dots, that's where you grab to move the menus around. Uh, so in this case, I'm going to grab this and it's going to create a white line. And that's going to show you where you want it to go. I want it to go just to the right of the original view panel. That's too much. I want it to be here. If I put it here, you'll see that it actually cuts this off here. I'm going to go ahead and undock. If you make that mistake, just go to the dots, undock. Cool. So I'm just going to take this, drag it, put the white line where I want it, right there. So I'm going to put another one right there. Uh, so new view panel, grab the dots, put it in the correct place. All right. now. This is what I'm going to show you. Let's create a cube. If you are in the edit window and, uh, and you have the stock editor camera and you go in here and you move this around, you can actually see that everything that happens doesn't translate over. Now, we're sitting here. User camera default. User camera default. User camera default. That's not good. We want all of these to move at the same time. So that you don't have three different windows supposedly displaying the same thing. That's not good. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, 
close this out. All right, so we have the three panels up again. They're all in the same direction. I'm going to create a cube. Uh, this is what we want to do. First, we want to create our own editor camera. That's the camera we're going to use. Let's turn it on. Now, the thing you'll notice is the camera is on, clicked here, not the default camera, but the check marks next to the one we just created. You go here, the default camera is clicked. We want it to be on the camera we just created. Same thing with this one. It's on the default camera. We want it to be on the camera we just created. See, it's checked now. Now, when we move this one, the other one snap into place. That's good. But if we create another camera, camera point one, and if I go over here, and let's just go ahead and click this. Notice these don't change. The reason being is this one, anything in the object manager is going to be this camera, this view right here. And if you look here, point one. But this one is still on the second, the camera that we created, the first camera we created. Same with this. So we would have to manually go in there. If this is at camera point one, we have to manually go in there and change each of these. Now, there is a way to get around this. What we're going to do is go up here and we're going to create a null. And on the null, we're going to right click it, Cinema 4D Tag Expresso. Now, I'm going to move this here where I can see it. I'm going to highlight the first view here. Go to the Attribute menu, menu hit Mode, View Settings. Now, this icon here, not the text, but the icon. I want to take this icon, the viewport perspective icon, and I want to drag it over here. Get it where I can see everything. Click the second view. Same thing. Go to Attribute menu. Make sure it's set out on View Settings. Drag that icon over for the viewport perspective. Put it to the right. Make it nice and pretty. Hit the third view. Click it. Make sure it's active. Again. Go to the Attribute menu, Mode, View Settings, Viewport Perspective, Icon. Drag it over. Make it pretty. This is what we're going to do. We're going to link the views. So uh, you have the red here. Just hit the red and click it. Go down to View. Go to Linked Camera. Now, so we've got linked camera of the first view here we want to link it to the other two that's real easy so we've got this little port here grab the port and drag hold while you hold it down with the right cl left click drag it and drop it on top of the blue here and let go and then just scroll down to the view then scroll up to the linked camera and click do the exact same thing for the other one other view third view boom view linked camera so now, when I pull this out of the way, I can sit here, and I can go to the first view. Everything matches. I can switch the camera in the first view. So right now, where camera point was, put it to the original, to the camera. Everything switches place. If I'm in this view, the second view, I can actually move everything around. Everything snaps. But if I try to change the camera, it will not let me. You have to change the camera here in the first view or in the object manager. Now it's very important, make sure you're either in the cameras you created, either two or how many you create. Don't go to the original editor camera when you first turn on Cinema 4D because that just knocks everything out of whack and nothing syncs up. All right, uh, we've gotten that out of the way. Let's start all over again.